Welcome everyone to the Amherst Design Review Board meeting of June 17, 2024. My name is Erica Zikas and as the chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, I'm calling this meeting to order at 5.01 p.m. We're very timely. This meeting is being recorded and will be made available via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Minutes are being taken. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by the Act by chapter two of the acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing is posted on the town's online calendar. Board members, I'll take roll call, and when I call your name, let me know if you're here. Um, Lindsay Schnarr? Here. Karen Winter? Not here today. Pat Oth? Present. Karen Blum? Present. And Erica Zikos, that's me. Board members, if technical issues arise, we may need to pause temporarily to fix the problem and then continue the meeting. If the discussion needs to pause, it will be noted in the minutes. Please use the raised hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I will see your request and call on you to speak. After speaking, remember to remute yourself. The general public comment item is reserved for public comment regarding items that are not on tonight's agenda. Please be aware that the board will not respond to comments during general public comment period. Public comment could also be heard at other times during the meeting when determined appropriate. Please indicate that you wish to make a comment by clicking the raised hand button when the public comment is solicited. If you've joined the meeting, the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate that you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the discussion of the chair. If a speaker does not comply with the guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be discontinued from the meeting. Tonight's agenda includes the following. Item one is general public comment period, and then item two is applications. And this evening we're seeing uh, DRB FY 2024-19, the town of Amherst uh, returning to talk to us about the public loo, the public restroom at Kendrick Park. Then we've got item 22, Gabe Kraus, uh, to review revisions to a previously approved logo and design uh, for Gabe's underground. And then uh, also noted as 22, uh, FY 2024, 22, Kendrick Properties Management um, for reference book. We may have an update of the uh, to the board about the Jones Library um, from Chris Brestrup, and we may fit that in after the Town of Amherst uh, presentation. Um, uh, we'll then have approval of uh, meeting minutes and um, other business in turn. Okay, so general public comment period. If anyone in attendance uh, wishes to speak, please use the raise hand function or press star nine on your phone. And barring any indication of public comment, I know there's a million town meetings happening this evening, so it's probably why everybody is in other places. Why don't we get started? Um, and Chris, are you speaking for the town tonight? I am speaking for the town and um, I want to apologize. Bob Parent is off on vacation. I think he's taking a one of those lovely river cruises or something like that. So he's having a good time and I'm standing in for him. Um, I did, um, I was able to get some information for you about the Portland Loo that's proposed for Kendrick Park, but I don't think I have all the information for you. Um, you discussed the color of mm -hmm. the Portland Loo, um, and there are, you know, a lot of colors that are available. Um, the, the color that you discussed last time was the green color that was used in the Kendrick Park playground. And I did send an image of the dark green color 
I think it's called forest green that was used on the um, picnic table and bench that is associated with the picnic table. And maybe either Jacinta or Erica could bring that up. Um, and then I also uh, sent an image of the um, the long bench that's a different color. It's kind of a beige color. So I thought you might want to talk about that as well. But this is um, the green color is, is this. So um, maybe you would consider using that for the mm -hmm. Portland Lou. Yeah. And then the beige color is this. So those are already two colors that are in Kendrick Park. Um, there's the very colorful playground itself, but those colors are kind of on the neon side. So, you know, they're very eye-catching and will attract children, but, and I don't have a, an image of that, but um, these seem to be more in keeping with, you know, what you wanted, more subtle. And um, anyway, so this okay. is what I'm presenting tonight to see if you uh, like either of these colors. I did reach out to the Portland Lou manufacturer to find out if these if the colors were available, but I haven't heard back from him. Okay, thank you. And the other bit that you wanted to know about was um, signage. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't part of the process by which the Portland Lou was chosen or situated. So Bob Parent is really the better person to talk to you about signage. So I'm going to ask him to come back to you next time to talk about that. Okay. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I think that we the 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 questions that we've had about the the large kind of branding signage have been addressed. We won't have to be we won't be looking at Portland Blue on the doors and it's not going to be painted with a mural or anything. This is really about the the signage that indicates that it's an accessible uh restroom. So, I think that we're just we're just boiling it down to that that sign. But does anybody on the on the board uh, want to weigh in on the color? We we did ask them to consider colors that could be found already in Kendrick Park. And there was at the last meeting, as I recall, some interest in in this forest green. But you know they provided this couple of options here. So, Lindsay. I personally think that the, the tan colored bench just disappears a little bit more, which is kind of nice, but it's just my, my thought. Sure. Karen, please. Yes, um, I agree with that. I think the beige, while it's attractive in a bench in a large structure would have a different effect and might stand out more. How do you feel about the green as an alternative? I think the green could blend in and be consistent with what's out. Mm -hmm. Ready. Okay. Pat, you want to be a tiebreaker? Uh, I, you know, I'm looking at the green right now on the screen and the beige. Um, and I, I think the green would stand out. Um, and it's a large structure. Do we want it to have that kind of presence in the park? Or do we want to have the beige that would be more um, less, less of a presence? But we're also looking at this in a season where the grass is brown and, and we have to envision what it would look like in every season mm -hmm. and how prominent we want the loo structure to be um if the signage is good and it indicates the purpose of the structure then the beige might be better for all seasons on the other hand the green is obvious that makes it very obvious so i'm, I'm really not coming to a solution here i'm just weighing what the effect would be in the park of something that's a much larger solid structure than the bench and a much larger solid structure than the table with screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and the fact that we're seeing this against a, a, fall, a fall landscape, um, it's, dif it's difficult to envision what I th I think the beige would 
blend in no matter what the season in, in its own way, because it's not so obvious. Um, but the structure itself with good signage saying what it is would be visible. I think the green would really stand out. And I, 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 I don't know what our goal is. Do we want it really to stand out or do we want it to kind of blend in? Yeah, and I think too that the fact that it's a, a a small singular form on the landscape is probably going to make it prominent enough. Like you said, the signage will be added as well. So right. if you like the idea of a, a softer color. My only concern about the beige is that it, if somebody did tag it, um, that would be more visible. It might be more attractive mm -hmm. to spray painting or chalking or what have you. Um, but I think that either color is respectful of the environment and and would be suitable here. Yeah, I, I think I think that's exactly where I'm coming from. That either color would be would be acceptable. Mm -hmm. It's just a question of I hadn't thought about the tagging. Um, but if someone's going to tag the structure, doesn't I? My opinion is I don't think it matters what color it is. Fair. And so then I'll return to Lindsay and Karen. Um, strong feelings either way, or could we approve both colors? I I think both colors are fine. I think if there's any uneasiness about it. I wonder if they have examples of those structures in those colors in settings to get we a better. Saw, yeah, a I think in the that first package we saw a couple of colors, one of which was a, a beige. If I'm remembering correctly, I don't know if it's possible to pull that up, but seems like people tend to go with the the dark gray that is the standard. I'm not sure. I would have to look back at the packets for the last two times. Yeah, yeah. And last time was the, th was that the, th I'm mm. not sure. I'm working on it, one second. Yeah, it oh. was May, May 20. May 20, and then there was April 29th, I think I came then, yeah, too. Yeah, either one. I'll stop the share for now. I'd like to say hello to Karen, because I haven't met her yet. I'm Chris Brestrup. I'm the planning director, and welcome to the Design Review Board and the world of planning in Amherst. Okay. Glad that you could join us. Thank you. I'm sorry I wasn't here last time, so you may have seen things I have not seen. Mm -hmm. I certainly don't want to have you go over material you've already gone over. No, I think it's a good it's a good call because one of the things that we had asked um, of Mr. Parent was to see a mock-up of the structure in place. And that's something that we haven't seen yet. And I agree that it's something that's like tends to be fairly helpful when making a decision about a structure in a context rather than as an abstract. I don't think you had the images of the structures last time, but I know you had them on April 29th, right? That was the first time I came to meet with you, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, the first time this was presented, we definitely had that package. Can everyone see that? Yes. Yeah, okay. just I see the gray. Yeah, so I believe, Jacinta, if you were willing to scroll down a few pages, we see it in context and keep going. Oh no, is that it? I think that's it. I only have five here. Huh. Let me stop sharing and see if there's another document that's more along the lines of what you're thinking. Proposed Portland Loo location. That's just the location without 
the structure. There were photographs of Portland Lou in place in various places around the country in different colors, mostly tending to be the earth tones, I think. Hmm. Let's take a look at the folder itself. I think you had showed this to us last time we were looking at it, Chris. I'm okay. just trying to find it. Board members, you can take this time to review the meeting minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone, one second. No, take your time, take your time, don't rush. I just need, sorry, I, I have a reaction to the gray as I see it again. It seems the color more for an urban setting than the park setting. So I, I'm, I'm consistent in not thinking that's a good color for Amherst. I wonder. Okay, I'm going to try something because it's not giving it to me where I'm looking for it. Um, I went online. They do have an example of it in the beige. Mm. Okay. Karen, um, is that on the company site that you found that? It's on the company site. I wish I could figure out how to share it. Um, <gasps> technically sound. Okay. Portland, Lou. Okay, here we go. I found it. Only took just a little bit of time. Jacinta is a whiz. No, <laughs> just patient. <laughs> um, can everyone see this? Yeah. Okay. So here we have the, the rusty brown. There's the beige. Yeah. And the one with the mural, which we're not doing. Mm -hmm. Those are the site plans. Okay. So, so could you scroll to the, the next page and just um land there? Yeah, zoom in a little bit perhaps if that's sure. a possibility. And then here we'll see it. This is a more urban setting as well, but there's some green trees around and this will be adjacent to a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. um, I'm willing to approve the beige. I think that this is clean and easy. Does anybody else want to weigh in? I'd like to make a decision on this, although they, they do need to come back, but I, I was under the impression that some orders needed to be placed. Maybe Chris, you have a thought on the timing. I don't really, unfortunately, I didn't ask uh, Bob Parent before he left, but okay. he, he wouldn't have asked me to sit in for him if he weren't eager to have this go, you know, yeah. move along while he was gone, so. I think the other thing that we could do is say that we want the accessible restroom signs to be like white lettering on a black background um, at this meeting so that maybe they don't need to come back mm -hmm. um, in future if we could get this settled. Lindsay, any thoughts? Um, I just was curious, the first copper color, 
darker color. Um, I know that's not one of the ones we're considering. <laughs> it's lovely in that kind of reddish rocky landscape. I think we did ask them to to match a color that already exists in the Kendrick Park furniture and what have you. I can see where the beige now that I'm looking at it can be. I think that would be okay. I, I mean, it's in, I don't see any examples of the dark green, so it's hard to yeah. imagine, but um, that could be acceptable. I, I would also agree that the beige is acceptable more so than the gray and the, the rust was interesting in the, that setting, but I it would certainly stand out in Kendrick Park in a different way. Okay. So in an effort to summarize, it sounds like there is either a preference or an approval a preference of or a, a, an accept, a willingness to accept the beige as a first choice if there's something that um, we aren't considering about the beige and the, and the town would prefer the green that's also acceptable, but it's not our first choice. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And if it's the beige, then... I would suggest, and I don't know if there's a picture of this anywhere else in the package, um, but that the 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 restroom sign, you know, just the little square restroom sign would be white letters on a black background. Rather, we've seen examples of blue. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that that would look right. I agree. I think black with white lettering makes sense. Yeah. We're going with beige. Okay, so that's not a motion. Um, <laughs> could I ask somebody to put that into a motion so that we can approve and move this one forward? I move to approve the blue for Kendrick Park in the beige color. I second. All those uh, in favor of that, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Thank you. That's unanimous. We didn't include in Lindsay's motion uh, the signage color. Could you add add a second one to the add a second motion, Lindsay? What was the signage color? Sorry. So that if they if the the restroom sign would be white lettering on a black background with the beige. Okay. okay. Do we see that? No, no, I don't think we have an example of it. It's in the. I was looking. There are some visuals somewhere in the package. Um, somewhere, okay. One second. Yeah, it's it's a standard oh. signage for a restroom, with both the male and the female figures, oh, white and a black background, is okay. what I remember. Okay. And I'll just take a look. And and I move to include the signage of the black background with the white lettering as right. part of the motion. And I second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's everyone. Great. Thank you. Appreciate this. Um, okay. So if uh, that's all acceptable to um, Mr. Parent and the, the folks working on this project, then they may not need to come back. Okay, good. Get it forward. Mm -hmm. Great. So Chris, did you want to take this time? I know that you have to run off to a family event. Do you want to take a minute to talk with us about the Jones Library? Sure. Yeah. Um, the Jones Library is, as you know, um, was, was bid out, was put out to bid, and it came in over budget. Um, and so the library trustees are hoping to work with Feingold Alexander, the architects, to um, do some cost savings or what they call value engineering for the project. And they believe that they can save about $3 million by making these changes. 
and the suggested changes. I'm not making a full presentation tonight. I'm just giving you a sort of a sketchy outline of what will be coming to you. But uh, the changes, the nature of the changes that would be under your jurisdiction would be um, changes to the landscaping, changes to that um, stormwater uh, detention and um, what was it called? A rain garden, I guess, in the back. Um, the There would be changes to the site utility upgrades. Um, there were supposed to be site utilities running from the Jones Library property through the um, alleyway or the driveway uh, next to the police uh, the fire station. And that was going to be a lot of um, excavation and need to repave that area. So they're thinking of not having those upgrades and just connecting to the um, utilities that are already on the library site. They're thinking about changing the synthetic slate shingles on the existing building um, to asphalt shingles. Um, they are thinking about deleting the replacement sashes for the windows, for the existing windows, and to repair the existing windows on the existing building. Um, they are thinking of changing the brick facade on the new addition to fiber cement, except for the area below the windows. So the area that's closer to the ground would still be brick, but the area above that would be fiber cement. Um, they're thinking of changing the metal standing seam roof on the new addition to asphalt shingles. Um, and they're proposing some interior changes too, but those don't come on under the jurisdiction of the DRB. So I'm just giving you the ones that do come under your just jurisdiction. So the architects plan to meet, they would like to meet with the DRB on um, July 22nd to present mm -hmm. the changes and to seek your approval. And then they plan to meet with the planning board on July 24th. They're under a time crunch because um, the, the library trustees have gained a six month um, extension in the Massachusetts library I'm not sure what the name of it is, but it's the board that gives the town money to build the library. So that board has um, given the town a six month extension, which expires at the end of the year. Um, and so the architects need to uh, make all the changes, get all the approvals, and then put the thing out to bid. And they're hoping to put it out to bid in September. So they're on a fast track and they need to appear before the design review board the planning board, and I believe the historical commission as well, in order to get the changes approved. So if they meet with you on the 22nd and you approve the changes, then they can move along and then your recommendations can go to the planning board. It may be that you're, you know, you won't be able to approve them on the 22nd, but this is the suggested timeline that we're gonna try. Um, so, I don't think I have any other updates to make about that, but you can certainly ask me questions. Well, I appreciate the the update and giving us the the heads up and something to prepare for. So thank you. And I, um, I my request would be that whether it's a full render, a rendering rendered image or not, but like in any way that they can help us to visualize those changes, um, whether they be sketches or collages or what have you. I know that they're working very quickly and that those things take a great deal of time to generate, but we appreciate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, sample boards that we could look at. Mm -hmm. like that. Anyone else have questions for Chris? Um, I think, um... Consistent with what you're asking for, the changes to the brick to fiber cement, the metal roof to asphalt, it would really be helpful to see what that would look like. Because those are significant changes in the character, especially as it relates to a historic building. I assume the library is a historic building. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. so I think that those changes um, it would really be helpful to, under, if the synthetic slate to asphalt, it would be helpful to see what that actually would look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
shall we move on then? Okay, and I'm going to say goodbye to you. I'm going to go celebrate Father's Day with my husband because we didn't get to do that yesterday. Great. <laughs> so thank, thank you very much. Appreciate Good night. your time. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. So Jacinta, is anybody here then um, from Gabe's Underground? Yes. I'm okay. going to bring them in. Okay, you should be seeing them shortly. Andrea Hunter and Gabriel Kraus. Good evening. Hello. Greetings. How are you? Good. Glad to have you here this evening. Are uh, you presenting for Gabe's Underground? I believe I am. Uh, Gabe has to leave at 545. So okay. we're not sure if that'll allow enough time for him. Great. We'll, we'll go as quickly as we can. Now, um, are you able to share your screen or would you like me to share your application materials on your behalf? I can share my screen. Great. Okay. There's Gabe. Hey, Gabe. Hello. Welcome back. Sorry, this is my first time with the camera here. So <laughs> <laughs> you look great. All right, um, I'll go ahead and share my screen to show the documents. Thanks, yep, and just walk us through. Um, some of the members of the DRB were not here for the yeah. first presentation, so you could just present this as a, as what it is. You don't really have to outline the changes. Okay. You know, like what's different from before, just talk about it as it is now. All right, I don't know if you need there were four documents that I submitted with the, the new application, mm -hmm. actually, re well, revised application. Um, this is the aerial view, which is very similar to the site plan. Andrea, um, I hate to interrupt you, but all we're sure. seeing is your mm, folder list of files. We're not oh, seeing really? the image. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so you don't see this document that's open? No. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can... Um, Oh, I know what I should do. All right, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to open the documents and then go back to that. Okay. So maybe that will work. Okay. Oops. There were four documents, so I'll open all four of them. Okay. All right, let's try this again. Hmm. All right, maybe this is it. Okay. <clears throat> yes, got okay. you. Okay, this is just uh, the floor plan and I we added um, just some, um, you know, just some notes on here to, to show and this also could operate as a as an aerial view. Um, we've got an awning over here. Can you see my mouse? Yes. Okay. The awning is over here. And on the awning, we're going to have graphics in the front and graphics on the side. Um, the parking lot is over in this area here. People would come mainly from this direction. Um, some people would... Some customers would come from way over here on the left. Um, as they walk towards the building, there's a corner of the building where we want to put another sign mm -hmm. or put a sign. And as they come to the overhang, you can't really see the overhang, but it the overhang covers this area here where the patio is located. And there's a big um, framework right here where I have the word sign in this black bar. There's a big piece of framework that had a sign there previously. And um, we removed that and we're gonna put a new sign there. Now, right here where it says the word decal, there's an, there's an entrance door. This is gonna be our deliveries, delivery door. 
So we want to put a logo and the words uh, delivery entrance right here on this door. And it'll be a, a, a decal. Um, as you go to the patio, there's another entrance. This is one of the entrance main entrances. We also want to put a, a larger decal with our logo on it here. All right. So I am going to try to, can you see that? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip ahead to, this is the aerial view again, um, but without the floor plan. So there's the awning again. Um, the graphics go on the front and the side. And this is the corner of the building. We want to build a sign on the side of the building. Mm -hmm. Here's one door with a decal, another door with a decal, and then that overhang framework sign. So I'll go ahead and show you where the... Oh, okay. I got to click ahead somehow. All right. Can you see these photos? Yes. Okay. Um, the One of the entrances, this is a, a picture of um, the entrance that comes off of the patio area. And so we want a decal on that door. This next one is similar, but it says underneath uh, delivery entrance. Um, and then over here, that's a picture of the awning with some graphic graphics superimposed on top. Um, and down on the bottom, this is the, the patio area down here. I don't know if you can see my mouse mm -hmm. the patio area down here, this whole structure up above, we're calling it the overhang. Mm -hmm. And here's that framework. There's, there are lights above they're cut off in the photo. Um, but they shine down on this face, this um, sign face. And that's where we, we would put a, a sign here. And over in this area, this is the building that has part of our business. Um, we want to put a sign here. Um, you would have to zoom in. Maybe I can do it on the screen. Yeah. Um, and it does say pool hall entrance. Okay. Just so that people know there's an entrance. If they go to the left, they're going to go to the patio area. It, sound, it might sound confusing. Um, and then over here is the, um, ooh, I'm going to zoom out. Over here is that is the awning again, this piece right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I'm going to, to the last page. Oops. This, these are the, um, mock-ups of the signs themselves the the overhang sign uh, which is the largest piece as you saw in the photos mm -hmm. and then the window decals for the doors um the awning graphics the side and the and the um the front and then of course the building sign right here so that's what we have do you have any questions that was a great walkthrough. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I want to open the floor to members of the committee. I wonder if Gabe has something to add. Do you have anything to add, Gabe? No, I think I think you covered it all. Okay. Good job. Lindsay, I saw your hand go up. Do you want to get us started? Sure. Um... I mean, I think overall you've really covered the key points of sight lines toward the entrances and done a good job of um, helping people find their way around. Um, honestly, my only concern is with the, the readability of Gabe's on the sign. Um, I, I really can't read it. Um, from, I mean, I know it's small on the screen, but it really, um, like I can read underground really clearly. Um, and I think that the brick and everything looks great. And I have no issue with like the style of the Gabe's. It's just, I think it's the, the, um, the thickness of the kind of script, um, lettering with the white background. It just, there's not a lot of space between the letters for them to kind of be um, individually readable. Um, and I don't know if other people, like, I actually think that the one on the bottom left where the outline is, I don't know if 
that one um, looks like it has a black surround and then the top one has a white is that right it's a little hard to see on the screen um but i think you know anything that can kind of make that that script font a little bit thinner and separate the letters a bit more against a bat a black um kind of edge outline i think that'll help a lot um so that's my only comment i mean i think it looks great um, and I think the locations of the of the signs are are nice. Um, it's just that readability factor for me. I agree. I think the signs are great in that you you covered them all and you sort of capture um, what the place is about. But um, I think I agree. Just spacing Gabe's differently, where there's more space between, would make a big difference. I I also agree with um, both comments that uh, as I as I look at it on the screen, Gabe's merges into a blue, into a blue, and and I think that should be emphasized better. I'm not a sign maker, so I can't advise how to do that. But I think Lindsay had the idea that it's separating the the letters a little bit and having it be less. Um, dense would would help because that's that's part of the the name and it's an important part of the name yeah i i agree as well um andrea i'm wondering can i ask you to like just zoom in so we're seeing that portion of the screen a little bit more closely okay oops let's see if i can erase my marks now i lindsay's point about the Gabe's being outlined in in white mm -hmm. on the top image it, the readability of the, the the top logo and the the ones below it are mm -hmm. quite different and I think the white is causing some kind of a a reverberation for sure so okay. I'm going to agree that the, seeing it on a seeing more black in the the voids of the letters and maybe if if there was an ability to give Gabe's a little bit more breathing room between the letters themselves, right? mm -hmm. the black is really helping the readability. And I think that's something you really want. So probably what I need to do is just get rid of the white outline and change it to black. And that should help mm -hmm. up here. Um, and then make this the black outline around these letters thicker. That should help because the, the background is black. Yeah, yeah. And it may mean also consider getting rid of the the bits of the brick that are peeking through inside mm -hmm. the G. Okay. Just to simplify it a little bit because I think it's, yeah. it, it is clearer when we don't see that. Okay. I would is, also just add, if I may, um, that perhaps rather than making the black border thicker, making the the blue of Gabe's a little bit thinner, like a little less bold. Okay. That also may help just because it's feeling it's feeling a little bit, I can imagine that even with a kind of like an expanded black border that it's still gonna feel a little bit squished. Okay. Um, the mm -hmm. thinner those that script font can be, you know, still be bold, but not so bold, the the more that um those letters will read soon. You know, as, I, as I'm looking at it, the sign overhang, which is at the top of the screen, Gabe's is, is has a white um, border. Right. And it's more on black than it is on the white brick. And and I the the um, window decal um, suffers from, I think, the, the black outline or the fact that the the letters are are not spaced enough because it's very different on on these um, the decals mm -hmm. that, than it is on the overhang, and the overhang is more readable. Oh, you think so? <laughs> I do. Lindsay and I were saying the opposite. I think it's more readable. The Gabe's part. I think the Gabe's part, even with these variations in background and outlining, 
is still hard to read. It feels a little cramped. And I'm wondering if there's a way to give a little more space between the letters. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So why don't you try giving some space between the letters? I don't know. You know, it's 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 a script font, and right now the B looks like it's connected to the E. Um, you know, if you adjust the kerning, there could be a gap, which you probably don't want. But mm -hmm. I think it's worth a try. And then Lindsay's suggestion about just reducing the amount of blue so that it um, so that the amount of black can increase mm -hmm. I think is a good one I mean it's a fun sign <laughs> kind of like busting through the brick I think it's mm -hmm. it's great it's really it's really dynamic and the the two fonts are pairing really well together but some the yeah there's just a, a lot going on and so to simplify a little bit okay increase the ratio of the black would be good um, any comments on uh, locations? I saw that the signs you were careful in your in your mock-ups to align the the signs so that as you turn the corner from the awning, things seem to be uh, consistent in terms of where they're located on or around the building, and I appreciated that. Anyone else have thoughts about? sign locations adjustments lenses i i um, think the sign locations are just fine yeah it's just the readability of the gabe's part yeah yeah could you just zoom in on that bottom right image the corner of the building image please um. So that staircase is a public entrance? No, that staircase goes, I think it goes to apartments above this on the on the second floor. So our I think me asking the question indicates that it's a little bit confusing, perhaps. Um was it to anybody else? Like maybe maybe if I were to see the whole wall, it would be really obvious because I assume that there's a visible door to the left of that image that has the the signage as well. Yes. There's that sign on the end of the frame that the the the, the lit frame. Yeah, that yeah. Um... I, I'm wondering because the edge of the sign from this view looks as if it it uh coincides with the first step of the uh staircase. I wonder if you moved it slightly to the left. If that would make a difference. I think if it gets too far to the left, it would not be visible. And I mean, I, I think if it is too far to the left, it might get lost on the other side of the railing or something like that. I have, a, I have a thought um, that's kind of separate from, from this discussion of kind of where it's positioned, but I just, um, well, I have a few thoughts, <laughs> so bear with me. The first thought is, could we ensure that since we're not seeing an elevation of that wall, that the height of that corner signage um, isn't totally out of alignment with the height of the other signs? Um, I guess, I guess the signage on that wall is just on the door. Is that right? And then, and then that corner. The, um two doors in the, the glass doors yeah yeah, here. yeah. i mean I, sometimes we get kind of like sometimes there's there's a really obvious um kind of alignment vertically or horizontally that that feels important to follow without seeing that whole wall it's a little hard to tell but um it's just something to be aware of i, I don't need to like dictate specifically where it should go but if there is anything adjacent to it just to kind of be aware of how it lines up perhaps even just with the location of the signage on the awning um i don't know what are other 
So that's one thought. And I'd mm -hmm. be open to hear other people's thoughts. I also think on that in that um, arrow, um, this is a very finicky thing, but I think you could lose that top arm um, and just have the arrow pointing to the left. So on the corner of the building signage again. Um, either Jack like, up this little piece here. Yeah, either connect it, I think, to the box around underground or just eliminate that little arm going up. Okay. So it's just visually, I think. Is there also information on the arrow in white? Yes. What is that? Does that just say around the corner? It says pool hall entrance. Okay. You can see it in the mock-up, um, which was right here. Okay. All right. Um, it could be more effective to just say pool hall just to give yourself a little more space. Um, I don't know that you need to say entrance and it gets a little squished, but mm -hmm. again, that's kind of a fine grain detail. Okay, so my other thought, and this is maybe too hard to do, but it could be cool to just let the, I don't know how hard this is because I don't do signs, but to let the edge of that underground, um, at least on this sign, just be rough. So you get like kind of a rough edge of the brick. So it really looks like it's popping through the brick wall. Are you talking about the, yeah. this sign here? Those are all my thoughts. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if that's possible to give it an irregular border or if other people think that that would look interesting or not. Um, but it just, I, I see it as an opportunity just because mm. um, just could look kind of playful. Are you, are you talking about the shape of the sign, like the outer edge of the sign? Yes. Oh, okay. That'd be fun. Yeah, it might be too difficult. So so that's kind of my like pie in the sky thought, but um, the other ones I do think are semi-relevant and like, be open to hearing other people's thoughts. I will weigh in. Um, Lindsay, I, I like your, your suggestions and I, I think you know, something as, as tiny as just simplifying that arrow could make a significant difference, and I like it. And I think that the height of the corner sign that you should attempt to find this, the horizontal center line, mm -hmm. it, you know, since it's leading you to the kind of primary entrance for the space, you want it to read as a as a partner of the one on the frame. So if it's possible to like kind of take that frame height, right? This the center line would match the center line of this sign here. Sorry okay. for the scribbles on your screen. No, that's fine. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean I, in some ways I I'm trying to piece it all together from the the separate images. Mm -hmm. But I think that you're your instinct is already that you're doing that. So I'm I'm just asking to kind of check that in the field when things are being installed. The, the putting putting the the flow of signage together I think will be helpful for people okay. to be finding. I'm not sure how that would work though, because I'm trying to think of the the height of the all right, let me see if I can get back to that screen. Mm -hmm. The height of the um the sign on the on the overhang yeah might be too high to line up with um with this particular sign on the building mm -hmm. i'm looking at the height of that frame vis-a-vis -vis the door that's adjacent right and the height of the the other awning vis-a-vis -vis its door and everything feels like it's pretty darn close so that's what i'm saying like i think it might be yeah, it might be, but I don't know if it's going to run into, I mean, if we elevated yeah, it, and I think my, my thought was not to put it up too high because I didn't want people to think that the, the pool hall was up these stairs. Agree. I was trying to put it low enough so that they would understand um, that it's not up the stairs. It's beyond, you know, it's to the left. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot to weigh. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Any additional thoughts from Pat, 
Well, Karen. No. no. Okay. I will attempt to summarize. The should I stop? I'm sorry. Should yeah, I stop? Go ahead. Sharing? Go ahead. You can stop here. Um, and attempt to summarize so that someone can put this into a motion to approve with recommendations as follows. Um, the first is to simplify the arrow. Um, give attention to the height of the corner sign so that it's aligned, visually aligned with the height of the adjacent awning and framework sign. And I may need some help with this one, the, the trying to, we, we're asking for some simplification for the benefit of the readability, specifically of Gabe's, mm -hmm. to allow Gabe's to become more readable, slim down the blue, increase the spacing between the letters and give more black background. Did I do okay? Like this was part of it, outlining the letters in black, which would sort of come with a black background. So like yes. <clears throat> I'm just thinking when it's not in the black background, but I, maybe I need to see it again. Yeah, I think um, in the instance where it's on the a primarily white background, are you, did I share the right screen? Like this is on a white background, but we see the the black outline, right? It's kind of given a bit of a black field behind it. That seems more readable than the, the white, which is kind of starting a little bit of a reverb. Yeah. So that's what I meant with black background, not that it's, yeah. Does that seem, are we, are we cool? And hey, Karen, <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Welcome, guten tag. Um, does that does that did I did I summarize in a way that is uh, uh, reflecting your comments all? And if so, um, do you need us to summarize that in a motion? I yeah, you could just say as a uh, motion as I don't know as as described by as, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Are we all good with that? Yes. Okay, I move to approve the signage with recommendations based on Erica's previous description and summary. A second. All those in favor then, let me know by raising your hand, say aye. Aye. Okay, great, that's unanimous. Jacinta, did you get all that? Thank you, <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, and we should uh, let the record show that um, DRB board member Karen Winter has joined the meeting. And um, Andrea and Gabe, thank you for your presentation tonight. Thank you. Thank you. For the pool hall. Mm -hmm. Yep, me too. <laughs> <laughs> when, do you think, open. when do you think you'll be opening? Um, we just have to, a few more things we have to finish up with the kitchen approval um and then uh that side will be will be able to have it have it open to the public i'm hoping within the next month oh okay so. great good so, yeah wonderful good luck thank you well thank Thanks. you so much have a nice day bye. Bye -bye. take care okay and so now we will move on to restless books at 69 main Elon should be joining us momentarily.
Hello, everybody. Greetings and welcome, Milan. Glad to have you here. It's a pleasure to see you all and to listen to your good work. <laughs> Thanks. Now, would you like to share your screen and walk us through your proposal, or shall I do that on your behalf? Just to that, uh, Erica, if you can do just the one uh, that uh, has all the signage uh, with the R. It's just one image, a simple one. Uh, yeah, maybe we can reduce it. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Much appreciated. Mm -hmm. This is the property on 69 Main Street, uh, two doors from... Uh, the Black Sheep. Uh, we've been. It's a it's a publishing house, independent nonprofit publishing house, and we have been around in the property for a year and a half, uh, thereabouts. And we are asking to uh, petitioning to uh, paint the facade in white, as you can see right now. It is brick color. Uh, it used to be. Uh, I think the latest tenant. The last tenant was a, a barbershop. There might have been somebody after that. It hasn't been painted, painted for quite some time. So it would be painting the brick facade white, as you can see it, and including that little awning uh, in, a, in a clearer white uh, that, again, because of the elements has been decomposing over time, just to bring it up to speed. Uh, uh, Placing a prominent R, which is the logo of the company, a, on the upper left corner of that, whatever frontal space is called, a, in red, a, just for purposes of you know disability and projection and a, so on. And a, well, aside from that, we're going to put on the window. Restless Books, independent publishers since 2013. We're hoping to do that. And all the stuff that you see inside in color right now is not, nothing of this has been done. Uh, we're waiting for the, the board to, to consider this and then to move forward. Um, you can see a kind of awning inside, a kind of sign that is multicolor and has the, the various covers that we have published over the last year or so. That is just temporary uh, it, to, to give a sense of that we are restless, but so that colorful design will disappear and you will have the R prominently at the top in a very muted way. All the rest is white um, or the edges of the, I think the, of the restless books on the window, maybe, I don't remember right now, but I think they might have an edge of black to make them more prominent. In the 69 that is above, yeah, the store is already there. We're just gonna make it more uh, golden and uh, visible. Nothing, nothing. it could stay the same. It's just to, to attract more. That That's basically, basically okay. it. Now, there are some additional pages. Yeah, um, all those are other variations that we Oh, have. these are variations. Yeah, considering. Um, you can oh, scroll down yeah. if you want. Sure. It just gives you a different taste of what what it is. Yeah. Okay. This right. is being done by a designer in, in Northampton. Got you. Okay. So if I zoom in a little bit and just kind of leave yeah. that on the screen. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Thank you for the okay. walkthrough. And I will open it up to members of the committee for your thoughts. I think it's like a nice sophisticated design. So thank you for bringing your attention, not only to your own signage and promotion, but to the building as well. I think that's yes. I mean, keep in mind also, dear friends, that um, there is an angle on the front window that is that uh, allows for the door to be just a step behind when compared to the left side, as you can see. So, you know, one of the man one of the challenges is to put restless books on the on those two windows in a way that looks balanced, uh, where independent publisher, all that. It's it's just the perspective that people have.
Lindsay and then Karen. I actually think Karen was up first. Oh, I'm apologies. Uh, Karen and then Lindsay. Thank you. Karen, did you have a comment? No. Okay. Oh, I was looking at Karen Blum. Your hand is up. Oh, sorry. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Lindsay. <laughs> okay. Um, I think this looks really sharp. Um, it's exciting to see this level of design um coming to town. And um, I really appreciate, you know, all the the angles and kind of the clarity of it and thinking about the readability of it. Um, my only my only criticism is that I'm feeling like the that there's kind of like three semi disconnected components. Um, and I'm wondering if there's a way, like the R feels a little disconnected from the restless books, feels a little disconnected from the golden 69. And I think they're all great. Each one looks really well designed and looks great. Um, it just feels a little like they aren't part of the same family. Um, I love the R. I guess what I wonder is like, is there a way to get the R into the lower storefront, like maybe on the door? Um, and not, and, and and say perhaps, not on top. No, I like it on top. Just a smaller one, or I mean, I'm oh, okay, this sure. is just my thoughts. I just think like bringing it in to the storefront signage, perhaps on the door, seems like an easy place to insert oh, it. Yeah. Or perhaps the R. I don't want to like mess with your restless books on the storefront too much, but I could imagine that perhaps there's like a red outline um, yeah. that kind of ties that together, or some kind of gold that bring comes into the white. Nice. Just a way to kind of integrate visually the red and the gold. I love it. Yeah. That's In other awesome. words, to, to make the red become the unifying force um, in a subtle way, that would be lovely. It, it could also be that the R, I don't know, maybe it's too much, that the R of Restless is no, because we already, I already have the... I, I think there, there's a way to perhaps do that, but I don't need, know that you need to. I think if you yeah, have to I'll leave that to the designer. Yeah. yeah. And then but I, I love the idea. Gold, you know, is there a way that that gold, which is such a fun punch, um, yeah. could perhaps come in? Maybe the independent publisher established 2013, yeah. or I don't know, something. But that's all. Yeah. Very good. Thanks. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I echo the comments that have been made design. It's crisp, it's sophisticated. And I think um Lindsay's comments about trying to integrate in some way um with color or with form um might might um give an even even better sophisticated look. So um I'm not a I'm not a sign person. But I, I, I think the way it is now is is very acceptable. But I think the suggestions might make it even more so. Absolutely. I agree with that. Well, these are lovely comments. Um, Karen, <laughs> you've had a minute. I just want to make sure you have a moment to have an opportunity to share your thoughts. If you have any. Are you speaking to me? Uh -huh. Okay, sorry. Um, I have to apologize because it's so late here in Europe right now, and I'm just kind of taking it all in. So my uh, basically, I agree with Lindsay. I like, I really like this design. I think it's unusual and it's catchy and it's crisp. Um, but it would be wonderful to have that somehow. Uh, one echo the other just a little bit, like having the red appear again a little bit in the um, in the letters that are down, or just not having completely completely uh, different styles that don't echo each other. Yeah. So if there was a way to do that, I I agree that would be good. But otherwise, um, yeah, congratulations! It'll be lovely to have this. 
which in our community is very fresh looking. Yeah, and I think the balancing the the restless in books across the the vertical split in the window is challenging, and I it's challenging. Um, yeah, I, I think it, they've done a nice job here with kind of adjusting the the spacing between the letters to make it feel more balanced. So, um, all right. So it sounds like the primary comment, and I ag agree with all of the suggestions, is really to integrate the three components. And then there was a kind of a, a menu of of options of possibilities that was suggested um, to consider bringing the singular R logo to the door it was one that Lindsay suggested. Considering integrating the red in the 69 or the gold on the independent publisher in your established date. Right. Did I miss any of those suggestions? Because certainly you probably wouldn't do them all, but maybe in this menu, there are some ideas that your designer could explore for you. Yeah. And, and as in all places, um, issues of budget might define this, how much this is cost of that, but I love the aesthetics that uh, all of you are proposing and, and couldn't agree with you more. Fantastic. So barring any other suggestions, somebody could make um, a motion to approve with the recommendations. I make a motion to approve with recommendations um but with the with the idea that the design is is um something that's uh, i probably am avoiding the recommendations but but i think the design as it is is quite good quite sophisticated but i think our suggestions or recommendations are to make it even more outstanding so uh, i i propose that as a as a as a if is a, it, it, I, I, that that would be the motion motion to approve as is and please consider the recommendations yes okay is there a second second so seconded and all of those who are in favor of that motion, please raise your hand, say aye. 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 And you have unanimous approval. Thank you. Thank you all. Really much appreciate it. It's a great store. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much for coming tonight and um, have a lovely evening. Thank you very much for the good. Forward to seeing them all. Good night. Well, Oh, and I'm still sharing my screen. Okay, great. Well, wonderful. We've um, moved our way through our three proposals and all that is left to do is to approve the minutes of our last meeting. And those are on my screen. And this was um, me and Pat and Fern. So, As we often do, <laughs> let me know if you've already approved, if you've already reviewed the minutes. Okay, I'll just do that. I'll do the slow, the slow rule. I've reviewed and I have no changes to, to suggest. I'm gonna scroll quickly to our first um, proposal. This was from uh, Dagmar. This first bit is simply, summarizing their presentation to us. Sorry, I should have said patio. It's changed from Dagmar to patio. So, okay.
This and I really like seeing my name as Madame Chair Zekas. This makes me feel much more important than I. I'll keep that going then. <laughs> no need. <laughs> I think you are very worthy of the title, Erica. <laughs> I, know. I should wield this with great honor. Okay, and then the second proposal of the evening was for MNT Bank. They are installing an accessible night drop deposit box. And then last week we saw the, the Portland Lou at Kendrick Park. This was their second visit to us. So Karen and Pat, as long as you feel that you're. Yeah, I'm I'm willing to approve the minutes. Okay. Shall we say so moved and so moved? <laughs> Karen, a second? Second. Okay, great. So uh all those in favor, let us know, please raise your hand. And if anyone's abstaining, thank you. That's Karen Winter, Karen Blum, Pat Oth, and Erica Zikas approving. Lindsay Abstain, not present, okay. And I know that the minutes said that we would talk about the DRB guidelines tonight, but I neglected to um, notice that that wasn't on the agenda and I, I didn't hustle for that to happen. So we can make that point for our next meeting. Sure. And do we all want to agree on just meeting on the July 22nd as our next meeting time? Thanks for that. Yeah, let's all do a calendar check. I believe that's the, the standard Monday date. Oh, interesting. I think it's off by one week. It is off by one week. One week. So does, yeah, we have it on the calendar for the 15th. Does, is the 22nd workable the, yeah. for y'all? Yeah. Yeah, I could, I could do either the 15th or the 22nd. It sounded to me as though the materials that were coming to us wouldn't be available till the 22nd. Yeah, I think that's the, the reason you're right. Okay. I just realized I'm coming back from Washington, D.C. So I, I don't know if I'll make it in time. The 22nd. Okay. Okay. Well, we will hope that you can join us. Um, and, you know, Karen, one thing that you could do is if you have the opportunity to review the packet of materials and you want me to ask questions on your behalf, because I know this one's important to you. I'm certain I'm happy to, to bring those questions to the group. Okay. Thanks. Presenters. Um, but if you can make it to the meeting, that would be wonderful. 
All right, then. That's it, everybody. Well done. Thank you, Erica. It's a lot Thanks of work. Making the town look good. All right. Good night. Thank you, Erica. Good night. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Thank you, Erica.